Welcome back to the Western Canada Fishing and Coaches Development Partnership. If you're anything like me, the first decision before games are where do I get my coffee? And is this an arena I need to wear long underwear in? The season is in full swing and it's such an exciting time to be in the arenas and watching the officials develop on the ice. Seeing officials improve is what truly brings joy and satisfaction to this side of the job. In today's episodes, we're going to talk about our duties as officiating coaches before, during, and after the game. I think what's important for all of us to understand is that we are all different personalities and communicate things in our own unique ways. We're just giving you our thoughts and ideas about ways in which we can deal with officials. Within your personality and your comfort level, you will find your sweet spot on how you deal and handle officials in your role as their coach. Let's get started with our duties before the game starts. Uh, before the game, you need to know the officials that you're coaching, right? Again, you need to know what level they're at. You need to know what motivates them. You need to know what their goals are. Uh, so knowing the officials uh, that you're working with that given night uh, can certainly help out. Once you get to the rink, you know, meet with them, see how they're doing, see how their day was, just make some general small talk to lighten the temperature of the room because they may be feeling a little bit of pressure uh, knowing that there's a coach in the building that night uh, just putting them at ease maybe talk about some pre-game intel uh, from the league that they're working just to to give them as much information as they can going in i'd say responsibilities prior to the game would be to go in you know don't don't wreck their pre-game routines you know make sure that they know you're there. Uh, make sure that they have a game plan and make sure that we're quick with our message. It's efficient and uh, very um, to the point, um, but don't sit in there and, and chat, chit chat. Let them get ready for the game so they can get focused and move on. Just kind of providing a little bit of uh, insight to the official and, and what you're looking for and what your focuses are gonna be for the game. Um, if you've seen that official work before, just remind them what you kind of spoke about last time, um, the last time you saw them, and then, uh, you know, set them up for success in that game, give them a little bit extra confidence before they head on the ice. Some great thoughts on our duties part of puck drop. What you do with officials really sets a tone for the game ahead. During the game is one where everyone has their own styles. For myself, it depends on the level of hockey I'm coaching for whether I see officials in between periods or not. At the younger ages, I like to go down between periods. It's quite often that we can talk about positioning or sight lines, and we have the ability to make adjustments and then see them as they progress into the next periods. At the older level, I do not always go down as often because a lot of things we discuss are big picture items. What is also important is each game is unique. Sometimes we need to go see the official between periods. They just need support, maybe in a tough game, tell them what a great job they're doing. Perhaps they need a little prodding or us to provide some intel about where the game is or where the game might be headed. Let's hear some thoughts on the various ways in which we coach officials during the game. Um, during the game, what we're looking for is just things that they can improve on and then also what they're doing well. So with our grassroots program and our younger, younger or less experienced officials, we like to pick two things that they're doing well and then two things that they could use improvement on. And the reason we start with two is it's just we don't want to um, overwhelm them with feedback. Um, and so that way they can pick two things from that game to work on and then they know two things that they're doing well. Um, and then sometimes if there's not really anything that I see at that level that they need to be working on, I'll, I'll do some nitpicking and maybe just work on making sure our arm is up nice and straight, our wave offs are nice and crisp and such. So yeah, that's what we're looking for. You know, we, I'm only one person up here, but you're kind of watching a whole lot of different things of where what they're doing on the ice, who's looking where. And then if there's a, a foul missed, who, what, where, one, why, or if the foul is called, good call. I make notes on that. I have notes on everything in the game, and then I review it with the guys after the game. I, I usually don't don't go into the room too often. If I have to, I just poke my head in and make sure things are going okay. If there's a situation that we have to to deal with that's a little bit larger, and and, and we know that an official might be struggling, it it's not going down and, and making them feel worse or or for negative. It's simply to go down and make sure that they're feeling supported so that the whole team can maybe get a reset and go out there and, 
and start fresh. Or maybe there's questions that they have uh, to go forward and it just allows the crew to stay in unison and, and that communication's open uh, so that no one's confused or unsure of where to go. Um, there will be times where I'll go down between periods and either provide support to officials, ask some questions about officials. I try not to guide or change the standard of game um, or the flow of the game by going down between periods, but I think it's important if there's a situation that happened in the game that they have somebody to bounce it off that has a different view or a different angle from the stands to be able to provide that support or guidance as they need it. After the game is our time to shine as officiating coaches. We must be open and honest with our officials when providing feedback provide them with some positive feedback, but also something they can work on in the next game and during the season. It's important to provide not only what they need to improve on, but give them why and how they can improve. As an example, if an official missed a belly, we cannot just say at 13-21 in the second period, you missed a check of the head belly. What we need to do is understand why the officials missed the penalty. We cannot talk about judgment until we have established what caused the overlook. Was it a bad read on play that created a bad sight line? Was it a good read on play Good positioning, good sideline, but we looked in the wrong area. Did we do all the things right to get a great look at a play and simply misjudged it? We must know where our breakdown was and give ways to improve on that aspect as we give the officials the best chance to succeed. Missed calls are quite often not bad judgment, but the after effect of other things we need to work on. Let's hear some thoughts from our coaches on how they approach their post-game duties. It's, it's a discussion, it's dialogue. We talk about some things that uh, I think that have gone well. We talk about standard, whether the officiating standard has been maintained. And then if there's some teaching points to work off of um, as a group or individually, then we'll, we'll talk about them too. It's not just my opinion on how things should be, but uh, again, a discussion on how maybe we could all do something better uh, for the future. I like open conversation. Um... I'll bring up points that I notice that maybe they can work on during the game. Uh, I'm open to discussion. If uh, we'll talk about uh, different situations on how they handle the situation, maybe there was a coach acting up on the bench that, hey, in my with my experience, I would have dealt with it this way. It uh, a lot of I like the conversations between the officials and myself, and it helps everybody involved and so far I think everybody's been pretty receptive to, to that kind of uh, treatment. After the game I think it, again it's important to analyze uh, the way the game went for the officials again talk about some of the things that maybe they brought up uh, prior to the game uh, bring up some of the things that you've been working on them in the past and then also as a, an officiating coach make sure you're asking them if they have any questions of you. Um, oftentimes there's things that come up throughout the game that an official uh, may have had happen to them, but the officiating coach didn't notice it. And so those are also opportunities where you can help coach through your experiences in the past. Some great insight on post-game duties as an officiating coach. We hope this segment provided some ideas that will help you in the role as officiating coach. This is an exciting time of year as we start to see officials for the second or third time, and we start to notice the improvements, both big and small, in the officials we're working with. Thanks for all you're doing and keep up the great work. Enjoy the rink and the arena coffee till we see you on the next video.